Cartoon characters are supposed to be silly, but this black Hemi Roadrunner is not messing around. This week we're taking a look at a 1971 Plymouth Roadrunner with a 426 Hemi installed from the factory and this car is just bad to the bone. I mean if you look at this thing, uh, by 1971 the Roadrunner styling had changed. It was a, a brand new design for 1971. Uh, Plymouth tried to clean up the aerodynamics on these cars and they did a really really good job. Uh, the things that you notice right away is that the whole overall profile is now more rounded instead of being very notchy with sharp corners like previous Roadrunners. One detail that really helped the aerodynamics on the car is the fit of the bumpers. I mean if you look carefully you'll see that the front bumper is a, a new rounded design but it blends really smoothly into the fenders and the hood and that reduced wind drag. Now the rear bumper, the same thing, it fits really nicely up against the quarter panels and against the tail panel. Uh, the side marker lights have a flush design. The door handles changed style and became a little bit smoother. The, uh, the whole car overall aerodynamically is much slipperier. You'll also notice this one has a lower chin spoiler in the front to keep it stable at high speed. And high speed is what this thing was all about. I mean it's very sinister looking in black and it's got the gold reflective hemi stripes that go over the top. But under the hood is where all the power is. It's got a 426 cubic inch Chrysler Hemi, made 425 horsepower at 5,000 RPM, 490 foot-pounds of torque at 4,000 RPM. But the cool thing was for 1971, the uh, Dodge Chrysler Plymouth products that retained the Hemi engine kept the higher compression ratio because in 1971, performance numbers were really starting to fall off for a bunch of reasons. Uh, the first and probably the biggest was the insurance companies were leaning on the manufacturers to kind of detune these cars to prevent racing and wrecks on the street. In fact, uh, for 71 there's an ad that shows the 383 and 440 Roadrunners claiming to be uh, characterized under a standard car insurance rating, which meant they weren't susceptible to a surcharge even though they had a 383 or a 440. And the reason for that is because for 71, Chrysler really detuned the 383 and 440, dropping the compression ratios down into the eights. Uh, but not the Hemi car. The Hemi car remained 10.2 to 1, was the same power level as it always had been. Uh, the dual four barrel Carter carburetors on top, big long duration, high lift camshaft. It was everything you could have wanted. You paid more because of the, uh, the power with the insurance rating, absolutely. And that might be one of the reasons why sales were down. They only made 55 of these cars, 28 of them had four speeds, and 27 were automatics. So maybe it was the higher insurance premiums that uh, kept people from buying these cars. But also in 1971, the power ratings switched from a gross rating to a net rating, meaning they published numbers with all of the belt-driven accessories installed, which took some power away. So everything seemed to drop in 71. And add to that that the gas crunch was starting to come on. Gas prices were going up, and things were really starting to look dismal. But the cool thing was, by 1971, you could still get a full-powered Hemi car, and this is one of them. Now I think this car was ordered to be a racer. I mean, not only does it have the dual quad 426 Hemi under the hood, but it's got a four-speed manual transmission and a Dana 60 rear end with a 410 to one rear gear ratio. So this thing, it was either gonna burn the tires all the way or it was gonna go really, really, really fast. Um, it's got a bench seat, which is kind of interesting. The interior color is uh, a gold color, which it contrasts with the black. I think it looks good against the gold reflective hemi stripe that goes over the roof. The Roadrunner was completely redesigned for 1971, but Plymouth knew what was cool and they stuck with it. For example, this strobe stripe that goes over the roof. This is reminiscent of the strobe stripe on the previous year's AAR Cudas. Uh, of course, in the hood, you got the air grabber scoop, which you had a version of on earlier Roadrunners. The best part was they kept the 426 Hemi and the pistol grip four-speed shifter. Uh, but again, if you know what works, you stay with it. Uh, you'll notice in the hood, this one also has the functional air grabber hood scoop system. And that was a manually operated scoop that you could open or close, 
and it would allow fresh air into that Hemi. And then of course the Coyote Duster scoop on the inside, which sealed up against the hood to allow that cold air to come in. Very cool looking piece. I mean, if you were gonna race somebody at a stoplight or at a drag strip and they saw that thing open up, you know, it might be another intimidation factor, who knows. Whoever ordered this car new, I think must have been a, a, a racer or a moonshiner, a street racer, somebody, uh, because the car doesn't really have a lot of luxury options, just a bunch of go fast stuff. It's got uh, manual steering, but it does have power brakes. Uh, it's got the bench seat, which is kind of unusual. Um, it's interesting to see that giant Hurst pistol grip shift handle reach from the floor around the front of that bench and then up to the pistol grip. Uh, it does have an AM radio and an inside hood release, but really other than that, you know, there's not much going on for luxury because this car was meant to go fast. It's one of a bunch of very cool go fast Hemi cars in the Brothers collection. And you can see a lot more of this car in that top muscle book which features a lot of cars from the Brothers Collection. That book is available on our website at vatvshow.com slash store. So who'd have thought a car that has a cartoon roadrunner in the grill would be such a bad machine and feared on the streets? Well, this one sure is. You can see more pictures of it on our website at musclecarotheweek.com. And we'll have it on the Facebook page. You can post comments, you can share it with your friends. And our YouTube channel is there. If you subscribe, you'll be able to see the next car right in your email box. Go check that out.